नमस्कार अभिवादन स्वीकार कीजिए हरप्रीत कौर का आप हमें देख रहे हैं इस वक्त हमारे ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन पर जी हाँ इसका मतलब है कि हमारा ये सेशन क्लास नाइन के स्टूडेंट्स के लिए है और सब्जेक्ट है साइंस लेसन नंबर रहेगा वन और आज का हमारा टॉपिक है मैटर इन आर सराउंडिंग्स पार्ट टू विच मीन्स हम ऑलरेडी इस टॉपिक के बारे में थोड़ा बहुत पढ़ चुके हैं और आगे और भी पढ़ेंगे तो डेफिनेटली हम इस पर पूरी चर्चा करेंगे और आपकी कोई भी क्वेश्चंस हो डाउट्स हो कोई भी आपको क्लैरिफिकेशन चाहिए रिगार्डिंग द टॉपिक आप हमें कॉल कर सकते हैं और ईमेल भी कर सकते हैं इससे पहले कि हम आपको बताएं वो सभी रास्ते जिनके जरिए आप हम तक पहुंच सकते हैं सबसे पहले हम आपको इंट्रोड्यूस कराना चाहेंगे हमारे एक्सपर्ट से आज हमारे साथ है मिस नेहा लहारिया शी इज टीजीटी साइंस फ्रॉम नेवी चिल्ड्रन स्कूल मुंबई मैम बहुत बहुत स्वागत है आपका हमारे सेशन में थैंक यू सो मच मैम जी थैंक यू तो व्यूवर्स अगर आप मैम से कोई भी क्वेश्चन पूछना चाहते हैं या फिर आपके कोई भी डाउट्स हैं तो नोट कर लीजिए हमारा फ़ोन नंबर हमारा फ़ोन नंबर है डबल एट डबल ज़ीरो डबल फोर ज़ीरो डबल फाइव नाइन दिस इज़ आर फोन नंबर और साथ ही साथ आप हमें ईमेल कर सकते हैं और उसके लिए हमारा ईमेल आईडी है डी टी एच डॉट क्लास नाइन एट तो इससे पहले कि हम सेशन की शुरुआत करें एक बहुत ही इम्पॉर्टेंट अनाउंसमेंट हम सभी के लिए यस दिस इज रिगार्डिंग इंडियाज जी ट्वेंटी प्रेसिडेंसी वी आर प्राउड ऑफ द फैक्ट इन फैक्ट वेरी प्राउड ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट इंडिया हैज अज्यूम्ड जी ट्वेंटी प्रेसिडेंसी एंड विल कन्वीन अ जी ट्वेंटी लीडर्स समिट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन द कंट्री इन ट्वेंटी A nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism, India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role in finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of all while manifesting the true spirit of Vasudev Kutumbakam that is the world is one big family. On this beautiful note hum shuruaat karte hain hamare session ki टॉपिक में एक बार फिर आप सभी को बता दूं टॉपिक है मैटर इन आर सराउंडिंग्स पार्ट टू सो मैम मैंने भी यू नो ड्यूरिंग माय स्कूल डेज पढ़ा था व्हाट इज मैटर बहुत स्टैंडर्ड डेफिनेशन होती है एनीथिंग दैट ऑक्यूपाई स्पेस एंड हैज मास इज कॉल्ड मैटर आई होप मुझे अच्छे से याद है एंड करेक्ट मी इफ आई एम रॉन्ग और साथ ही साथ हम पार्ट टू करने जा रहे हैं तो मैम प्लीज uh, हमें थोड़ा सा क्विक रिवीजन अगर हम कर लें कि पार्ट वन uh, में हमने क्या पढ़ा था और पार्ट टू में हम क्या पढ़ेंगे यस मैम सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड विद दिस टॉपिक इन पार्ट वन वी डिस्कस्ड ऑल द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स ऑफ मैटर राइट सो बिफोर वी स्टडी अबाउट द स्टेट ऑफ मैटर वी शुड नो दार्टिकल्स हाउ दे आर हाउ दे आर अरेज सो वी डिड दैट Hmm. so they have space between them they are continuously moving and hmm. they have a force of attraction between each other right these are the three characteristics so after that we discussed about solids liquids and gases in detail ji and we can take a quick revision if you take a look at this table we have all the properties mentioned in a tabular form mm mm-hmm. so uh, we have the properties of shape volume diffusion compressibility fluidity rigidity density and kinetic energy interparticle space and force of attraction so right. we have tabulated it in case we need a revision on this mm-hmm. so after this we actually started with the interconversion of states of matter we discussed fusion and today we will be continuing with this topic we will be starting with vaporization and continuing with sublimation deposition etc and how these states of matter are changing Right, ma'am. Them. So, ma'am, I have seen in the slides that uh, you have already taught us about three states of matter: that is, solid, liquid, yes. and gas. So, ma'am, my first yes. question, ma'am, is this: Can matter exist in all three states? Yes, matter can definitely exist in all the three states: Jee. solids, liquid, and gases. It mm-hmm. is just a matter of the environment in which they exist. Right. So, we will be. discussing that in today's session how pressure temperature affects the state of matter Jee. so we have a very common example water right. we know that it exists as a solid liquid and gas as well right so yes so ma'am uh, please tell us ki kaise jo ek matter hai wo teenon states mein exist karta hai let's continue with this discussion please ma'am hume samjhaye 
Yes, ma'am. So in the previous ex- uh, session, we discussed about fusion, mm-hmm. which is also called as melting, mm-hmm. and we discussed about the melting point mm-hmm. of a solid, and mm-hmm. that is the temperature at which a solid starts to melt. Okay. And we also discussed about the very important term, which mm-hmm. is latent heat of fusion. Mm-hmm. So in today's discussion, we will. uh study vaporization and latent heat of vaporization which is very similar to our previous discussion so ma'am shall i start with please. today's topic ji please go ahead ma'am please yes so as you can see on the screen we have a few points about vaporization mm-hmm. so basically it is a phase transition from liquid phase to vapor phase or okay. gaseous phase okay. so there are two types of vaporization evaporation and boiling So evaporation is a special topic which we will be covering towards the end of this chapter right. and boiling is what we will be studying right now mm-hmm. so all of us know that if we want to convert a liquid to a gas we need to apply a particular amount of heat so right. if we boil some water eventually it gets converted to steam mm-hmm. so what is happening at a particular at the particle level these particles are actually gaining enough kinetic energy to break free from these forces of attraction so they start moving around randomly and eventually a point comes when these liquid particles have changed into gas particles so a very important term here we come across is boiling point mm-hmm. so it is actually a temperature at which the liquid starts boiling at the atmospheric pressure so temperature yes we understand that it is the temperature at which the liquid starts boiling but why do we have a mention of atmospheric pressure here mm-hmm. so this is because pressure actually affects our boiling point so if we go to a higher altitude if we visit a hill station or if we are attempting to climb climb a mountain right we know that at up in altitude the pressure of the atmosphere it decreases ji so the boiling point will also decrease at that altitude so mm-hmm. the boiling point of water is 100 degrees we all know that so if we go to a higher altitude your water will probably boil at 98 or 97 ji now why is pressure affecting our boiling point we know that particles are trying to break free from the forces of attraction and trying to get converted to gas so when we increase or decrease the pressure above that liquid the forces uh, the energy required to break free will also change right. so if we increase the pressure these particles will find it difficult to move from liquid phase to gaseous phase so that's why more energy more heat energy is required okay. and the boiling point increases okay and opposite of that if we are decreasing the pressure above our liquid the mm-hmm. particles will find it easier to get converted to gaseous state because now the pressure is not so much okay. so the boiling point decreases hmm. so this is the effect of pressure on boiling point and the temperature is measured at atmospheric pressure at normal atmospheric pressure when we record the boiling point of a particular liquid ji so the last point you can see is boiling is a bulk phenomenon hmm. so all of us have seen when we boil water in a pan hmm. the water is not going to boil in particular areas yes. the whole water boils together so the whole bulk of the liquid is boiling together that's why boiling is called as a bulk phenomenon hmm. so we discussed this we can actually go back to our topic fusion when we discussed that melting or fusion is a surface phenomena hmm. so this is the difference between melting and vaporization that uh, melting was a surface phenomena it happens only at the surface whereas vaporization or boiling is a bulk phenomenon right so the next topic is latent heat of vaporization it is very similar to latent heat of fusion mm-hmm. we have already discussed what do you mean by latent heat and why is this heat energy not showing up on the thermometer when we are measuring the temperature mm. so the heat is actually used up in overcoming the forces of attraction so we can say that that heat is hidden inside the contents of the liquid and that's why we call it as latent heat so the hmm. definition is very similar to latent heat of fusion it is the quantity of heat that is required to convert 1 kg of liquid to vapor or gas at its boiling point hmm. so this is called as latent heat of vaporization so if you take a pan of water 
and if you start boiling that water and you have a thermometer inside to measure the temperature ji you will see that as soon as you reach 100 degrees hmm. the water will start boiling but the thermometer will not show any increase in temperature till the time the whole liquid has converted to a gas ji so that stagnant point is because this heat is actually the latent heat hmm. so we come across a very uh, interesting observation so at 100 degrees we can see that both water and steam are coexisting with each other Gee. so the temperature is the same but still if you see that steam if you uh, put your hand near steam or if you come across steam hmm. you will get much more severe burns than yes. if you get if you get in contact with boiling water at the same temperature true true now why is that so this is happening because particles in steam they have that extra latent heat which they have absorbed okay. and they have that extra energy so that is why they will cause much more severe burns than the boiling water okay. so that is a very interesting observation we can actually see it in our daily lives as well right. but i don't recommend putting <laughs> your hand in boiling water or going near steam i'm sure so, students have experienced this once in a while i yes. guess Yes, uh, we all must have also experienced when uh, we are getting hot, piping hot rotis Gee. from the kitchen, and we try to make a hole in that roti. Absolutely. You will observe that the steam coming out of that roti is actually causing a much more severe burn than yes. warm water or hot water. True, true. So this is the reason why it is happening. Right. So our discussion about melting and latent heat, we can actually see it visually using this graph. Mm-hmm. It is a graphical representation. of the interconversion of substance right. so from solid to gas what is happening why is the temperature increasing or not increasing we can see this in the graph mm-hmm. so on the x axis we have a uh, time or heat because we are continuously applying heat with time mm-hmm. and on the y axis we have temperature mm-hmm. so this graph is showing how temperature changes when we are applying heat to a substance mm-hmm. so initially uh, so for this whole discussion i will take up the example of ice it is the most common substance around us yes. and we can actually do it ourselves as well so if you start at point a you have ice with you and if you start applying heat to that ice um till it starts melting you will see an increase in the temperature mm-hmm. in the thermometer so ice probably has a temperature of minus 5 to minus 1 so when you apply heat it will start increasing in temperature till it reaches the melting point hmm. and we all know that at melting point the heat will not show any change in temperature because now it is the latent heat which is used up in the conversion of the phase so you see a straight line bc hmm. that is parallel to the x axis so hmm. this shows that even though we are continuously applying heat there is no increase in the temperature okay. so this amount of heat is called as latent heat of fusion we already discussed that right and one interesting thing to note about this graph is that it is also showing you the phase which hmm. is existing at that temperature so hmm. be- before b it was all solid as soon as the solid starts to melt throughout the process of melting solid and liquid state will coexist with each other so hmm. we have also seen this when ice is melting it is not suddenly getting converted to a puddle of water hmm. right so we have some amount of ice and some amount of water and it is gradually melting melting and we get to a point where all the ice has melted to a liquid right so this is your point c uh-huh. where now the liquid exists and solid is no more existing so if you keep applying heat of course the liquid will also show you an increase in temperature till it reaches the boiling point so okay. similar to latent heat of fusion you have latent heat of vaporization and mm. you again get a parallel line to x axis which is de okay. so till cd you were getting an increase in temperature but after it reaches the boiling point you will have a stagnant point mm-hmm. and there will be no increase in temperature because now the boiling process is happening so again the two phases liquid and gas they will coexist with each other we have all seen this when we are boiling water the water and the steam they are coexisting with each other right mm. so this is the process of boiling shown in between b and e okay now once the liquid is all evap uh, all boiled and it is converted to steam you will have only gas left and if you increase the temperature it will now show you an increase in uh, thermometer reading so now, this is a very nice graphical representation mm-hmm. to understand how the temperature is changing with the application of heat 
Right. So, ma'am, I have a question here. We have learnt mm. about latent heat. You are talking about temperature. You are making us understand this with the help of a graph. So, a question mm. made up related that when we catch fever, so hum apne, yes. uh, par, you know, we put uh, wet strips on yes. forehead. Ma'am, what is the reason? Hota hai? Why do we do that? Okay. So, this is actually related to evaporation. Okay. So, we know that particles, when they want to get converted to a particular state from liquid to gas, mm -hmm. they will absorb heat from the surroundings. Right. So, when we have fever, fever, our body temperature is high and our aim is to lower it down. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, when we use those wet strips on our head, right. so that water will absorb the heat from our body and get evaporated. Okay. So, okay. essentially what is happening, the strip will start losing water but our body temperature will start coming down because now that heat is getting absorbed by the water. All so right. this is a real life application of evaporation, how it cools our body in the time of fever. And this is a scientific explanation behind this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's All right. proceed further. Yes. So moving ahead, I have one question for the students who are watching this session. Mm -hmm. So we discussed about water and steam. So this is a similar question, mm -hmm. which will have more energy, the particles in water at zero degrees or the particles in ice at zero degrees. Okay. I think I left with this question in the previous session. So I would like to clarify and answer this question now in this session. So similar to our liquid and vapor discussion, the answer is the same. The particles in water will have more energy because when the melting process is happening, G. the solid is absorbing heat and getting converted to a liquid. So that extra amount of absorbed heat exists in the particles of water. So that means if you compare solid and liquid at the same temperature, your liquid will have more energy rather than the solid particles. So this is the answer to the question which I had given in the first session. G. So, in this question, we also noticed there are two units which are mentioned, degree Celsius and Kelvin. So, these are the units we use to measure temperature. So, we can see that 0 degrees is also given as 273 Kelvin. Mm -hmm. So, let me just throw some light on this small topic. So, Celsius and Kelvin, they are simply units of measuring temperature. Like we measure length mm -hmm. in meters, kilometers, inches, foot. And we can also convert between these units, G. right? So when we are measuring temperature, we can use these two units and there is a conversion between them. So zero degrees is actually equal to 273.15 Kelvin to mm. be exact. But for simplification of our calculation, we only take 273 Kelvin. G. So now if you want to convert between these two units, you can use this conversion given in the yellow box. Mm -hmm. So if you have the temperature in Celsius, Simply hmm. add 273 to it and you will get the temperature in Kelvin. G. And if you want to go in the opposite direction, if you have Kelvin and if you want to go to Celsius, we can simply subtract 273 from the Kelvin reading Hanji. and you will have the answer in the Celsius reading. So this conversion is very simple yet it is very important for us to know. Right. So there is a question again in this session, I would like to uh, give this question to our students. So mm -hmm. uh, you need to convert. 15 degrees Celsius to Kelvin and 350 Kelvin to the Celsius. So mm. I'm just going to help you out how to do this, but the answers will be given by the students only. Okay. So 15 degrees Celsius, if you want to convert to Kelvin, you need to add 273. And in the second one, 350 Kelvin to Celsius. That means you need to subtract 273. So do let us know what answers you are getting to this question. Mm. And let's move ahead with the other phases with the other phase changes. Hmm. So till now we have been talking about solid to liquid, then liquid to gas. Right. But there are some substances which upon application of heat, they don't get converted to liquid. Hmm. They get converted directly from solid to gas. So this process of conversion from directly solid to gas is called as sublimation. Okay. So basically they are skipping the liquid state they don't have the property of getting converted to liquid. Right. And we have some examples, naphthalene balls, perfume tablets. We have all seen this in our daily life. So yes. all of us have noticed our parents putting those white colored balls in our wardrobes, in our suitcases, where yes. we store our clothes. Right. So all of you must have noticed those balls, they slowly decrease in size and they eventually disappear without True. leaving any liquid in True. their place. True. So this is because naphthalene 
has the property of undergoing sublimation so it does not undergo a phase change from solid to liquid it directly jumps to uh, gaseous state hmm. and the second example is also very commonly seen perfume tablets we have seen those um, perfume tablets which we keep in our room as air fresheners in yes. our washrooms yes. so even they eventually disappear they don't leave any trace of liquid hmm. so they also undergo sublimation and camphor is the third example we have all seen camphor in our real life so yes. on the right side there is a picture of uh, an experiment which we can do to confirm whether camphor sublimes or it melts so if you take some camphor in a china dish and you cover it with a funnel and you uh, stop the vapors from escaping and mm-hmm. you put a cotton plug on it upon application of continuous heat you will see that the camphor does not actually melt right there are fumes of camphor inside that funnel because mm. camphor undergoes sublimation hmm. now the opposite phase change from gas as a solid is called as deposition so all of us when we go to any cold area or if the temperature is very less mm-hmm. we see that there is a frost formation on the leaves yes around us yes so this is an example of conversion from directly gas to solid okay so there is no condensation happening here yes. and this process is called as deposition okay so these are again two processes which don't occur so frequently but they do occur around us and we can observe them carefully okay so the next topic is effect of change of pressure mm-hmm. on the state so as we were discussing about the boiling point how it changes with the change in pressure hmm. so not only boiling point but even states can change with pressure so all of us have seen lpg cng around us right mm-hmm. so lpg is liquefied petroleum gas cng is compressed natural gas so what is this liquefied gas or compressed gas so it is actually the liquefied form of gases that we use in our daily life right so how can we liquefy gases there are two conditions that we need to follow mm-hmm. first we need to apply pressure and second we need to reduce the temperature so what is happening at the particle level when we apply pressure we are actually forcing the particles to come closer right and we are decreasing the interparticle space between them so they get converted forcefully from gaseous state to liquid state mm-hmm. and by reducing the temperature what are we doing we are decreasing the kinetic energy of those particles so they will not move around so much and it will be easier for us to compress them so under these two conditions we can liquefy gases and uh, the third example oxygen cylinders is very commonly used in hospitals clinics where we need to transport oxygen mm-hmm. so we do that in a liquefied form now mm-hmm. there will be a common question coming from students why do we need, need to liquefy gases why mm-hmm. can't we just let them exist as they are right right so the Uh, reason for this is gases occupy a lot of volume hmm. because the particles are moving around so randomly and there is a lot of interparticle space right. so if we liquefy them it is possible to store them and transport them in a more convenient manner okay so as you can see in the diagram there are there is a gas taken and you can see the particles black colored spheres mm-hmm. and on top of that there is a piston hmm. so as the piston comes down that gas is getting compressed particles are coming closer Right. So you can see the difference in the volume occupied in the first and third cylinder. Hmm. So as we know LPG, CNG, oxygen cylinders and other gases when we need to use them in daily life hmm. we need to be able to transport them easily and yes. we need to be able to store them easily. So this is the real life application of why we liquefy gases. Right. Uh ma'am we have very little time left so we would request yes. you to kindly wrap up uh, the last segment very quickly ma'am. Yes. all right so i'll just stay on this particular topic effect of change of pressure because there are two effects so we have discussed the first one and there is only one left okay and then we can end the session so all so before i start explaining the second effect i just want all of us to imagine we are in a concert mm-hmm. and there is a singer or there are performance uh, performers on the stage so all of us have uh, noticed there are some white fumes coming from the bottom of the stage to create that ethereal effect right, right. and sometimes when we go for some celebrations like marriages or mm. in any parties we see that there are pots or containers and in that the people just put some solid inside that and then white fumes start to come out of those containers to give right. that fairy tale like effect right? right so this effect is coming due to 
a substance which is solid carbon dioxide hmm. so all of us know that carbon dioxide exists in gaseous state under normal conditions but if you apply pressure on that gas hmm. it undergoes deposition which we spoke about a few minutes ago right. so, so carbon dioxide does not liquefy it gets directly converted to solid and this substance is called as dry ice and ma'am so if i am yeah i'm so sorry i'm interrupting you but this is a really interesting concept and i just want to ask you one thing yes. correct me if i'm uh, wrong that even the ice cream vendors are using dry ice basically to store the ice creams and to maintain the temperature uh yes dry ice can definitely be used because it is stored at a very low temperature okay. so okay. it does give a cooling effect but also uh not only carbon dioxide even nitrogen gas okay. is used for that cooling effect so right. it might be uh, it might be nitrogen or carbon dioxide but yes it is a similar effect in the ice cream cards all so right so that's a very nice observation ma'am so <laughs> thank uh, you why is it called dry ice because there is no conversion from uh, solid from gas or solid to liquid right carbon dioxide is skipping the liquid state so that's why that solid carbon dioxide is called as dry ice and also if you remove the pressure mm-hmm. then it gets converted directly from gas uh, from liquid to again gas so it is undergoing sublimation and deposition so carbon dioxide is a substance which skips that liquid state mm-hmm. and we get such interesting um, effects from it those white fumes <laughs> they are very interesting and they are very useful yes. in our um, occasions special occasions absolutely so, and yes ma'am Yes, so ma'am, we are running short of time, and yes. I request you to kindly close the session here. We are very yes. thankful to you for your valuable contribution, and I can see that dry ice is something very magical, and probably is used uh, is being used for magic shows also. I'm just imagining. Yes, But, yes, that uh, is true. Yes, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. तो व्यूवर्स ये था हमारा आज का सेशन बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक था आई होप आपके सारे डाउट्स भी क्लियर हुए होंगे और सारे कॉन्सेप्ट्स भी क्लियर हुए होंगे अब से कुछ ही देर में हम आपके लिए लेकर आएंगे हमारा दूसरा सेशन जो क्लास नाइन के स्टूडेंट्स के लिए है एंड इट इज़ ऑन संस्कृत लैंग्वेज और इससे पहले कि हम अपने सेशन को यहीं पर रैपअप करें एन सी ई बुक्स के बारे में हम आपको बताना चाहेंगे आप हमारी टेक्स बुक्स परचेज कर सकते हैं हमारे सेल्स काउंटर अक्रॉस द कंट्री हैं साथ ही साथ आप ऑनलाइन ऑर्डर भी प्लेस कर सकते हैं एन वेबसाइट पर और अगर आप पी वर्जन डाउनलोड करना चाहते हैं तो आप दीक्षा ऐप ई पाठशाला और एन वेबसाइट से डाउनलोड कर सकते हैं फिलहाल हम इस सेशन को यहीं पर रैपअप करते हैं आप हमारे साथ जुड़े रहिए मिलते हैं कुछ ही देर में नमस्कार